Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. X-Men Days of Future Past, Movie Thoughts. Now, I was a little surprised that Wolverine apparently had adamantium in, in the future when, you know, yeah, it seems like he maybe shouldn't from from other events. Let's let's go with that. I quite liked when when Magneto is is like almost sort of killing Wolverine and he's got, you know, he's he's putting those steel, you know, I think it's like pipe, yeah, things through him and he, you know, has him like, you know, almost spread eagle up in the air and he's, you know, but I think that might have been like a, a, a nod to when, when Magneto tears the adamantium from Wolverine's bones. That was very nicely done. That was a good little, yeah. I know it's, it's really superficial, but when the theme kicked in right there, it, it, I loved it. I, I knew that it was good. I mean, I was already pretty psyched for this movie. I, I mean, Brian Singer returning, but, you know, with, with that, and then you have the, the Sentinel, you know, adapting to their, their powers thing. Yeah, that really really got you sight for the rest of the movie. Very nicely done. I quite liked the, you know, excuse me, the, the striker in this. This is, see, Origins, take notes. This is how you do William Stryker as, as a young man. Just the, the characterization, the little casual mention of his son, Jason, and the the just yeah the the interest he takes in mutants and the the determination you know when when you first see him at the you know in the Vietnam you know I mean he's like I don't think you have jurisdiction here who do you who are you really you know that that whole thing you know where Mystique is like freeing mutants from this army guy, you know, she's like, don't ask, and he's like, don't tell. Which, also, it's it's a nice scene, although it's, you know, it's one of these things where if it wasn't really there, I mean, basically all it does is serve to show us that Mystique is, you know, out there looking out for other mutants. You know, she's not in hiding and she is doing something that maybe Magneto would have wanted, but she's not just, you know, yeah, she's she's also, I mean, where, where he maybe wants domination, you know, is she, she just wants them to be, you know, safe, so, so yeah. Now the but I mean we we know that Magneto I mean where where we humans are mere Homo sapiens Magneto would say that he and his kind are Homo superior which translates roughly to fabulous and 
Yeah, I I would list like my my favorite interactions between you know Magneto, Mystique, and Xavier, but I would just be going over their their all of their scenes in in entirety. Okay, just briefly, I really love the whole conflict between what exactly will happen to Mystique, where Magneto is quite willing to kill her. Xavier really wants to stop her, and ultimately, it's her choice. She, you know, she can kill the, you know, she can kill Trinoscorp, you know, any of the, you know, and it makes sense. I mean, that's that's beautifully done. That's one of the few times we see her really devastated. You know, the the one tear. And yeah, you know, from from seeing her, you know, her dead friends in you know, those files, and so yeah, I mean, she has every reason to hate him, to want revenge, but when she really gets that chance, yeah, and and it's beautifully cut. That's where the whole future scene thing actually does pay off. That is that is kind of the one place. Where that's interesting is, yeah, when when the when when we're literally seeing, you know, in just a few seconds, it's gonna be too late because by the time they get, you know, yeah, by by the time they. By the time the Sentinels reach the table, there will be no more time travel. You know, if basically, if, as I understood, it, if Mystique hasn't, you know, dropped the gun by then, then it just won't matter. You know, there is no more time traveling. The people involved are dead. And yeah, and still Xavier leaves it up to her, and that really is. Because that's the thing that those are, again with Mystique, Magneto and Xavier they approach the same problem from two different directions and with two different solutions. Where Xavier sees we have to we have to convince her and stop her. Magneto sees we have to kill that that is that is his solution as as she points out. Killing, killing that one man will not be enough. It's never enough. It was never enough for you. That's that's perfectly. I I love those little lines that just sum up the character so well. That's exactly it for for him. When is enough ever enough? And yeah, he's willing to kill her. And it's not that he doesn't care. We know that for a fact. He cares deeply about her, but he is willing to make sacrifices, as as he. You know, as he muses in X Men One, Charles is still not willing to make sacrifices. That's what makes you weak. Xavier Magneto is very. I mean, he is he is driven, and so again we have these two different solutions, and ultimately, it is up to Mystique because, also, I, I love the way that Xavier trying to take control over her keeps, you know. Yeah, it, it's back and forth kind of will, you know, yeah, he, he keeps trying to talk her out of it by using, you know, by being all insistent and, you know, putting these things in her mind and, you know, taking over, taking over people who are, you know, nearby her to, to relay messages and, and such. Yeah, and you know, I mean, Mystique, you can argue with to blue in the face. So, yeah, I quite liked the, the when when Wolverine comes back. I mean, that whole slew of cameos there at the end, beautiful. I don't know for sure about the Rogue cameo if that really does mean that they're saying. You know what? X3, that whole road thing? Yeah. No. Just no. 
But I'd like to think that that is exactly what it means. I mean, I'm not saying that Xavier wouldn't allow her to stay, you know, under those circumstances. But, yeah, I just... Anything that screws over X-Men 3 is fine by me. But yeah, every every single cameo there was just perfect. Yeah, Kelsey Grammer just went, oh, it's, it's something about sleeping late or something. Yeah, that's and you know, Gene, oh hi, and Iriza, and and you know, Colossus is like, hey, what's you know, did, did you forget about something? So, uh, Scott, I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> you played it so perfectly. That was yeah. And, you know, Logan comes in. Yeah, at, at first, I mean, until they said that he was apparently a teacher there, I was like, dude, how much have you been held back that you're still in school? But, yeah, Xavier says that he's, prof he's a teacher of history. And until he says, you know, oh, could you refresh my memory because I don't actually remember anything, anything since 1973, I was like, it makes sense that he's a teacher of history, he lived through so much of it. Yeah, the movie was pretty... I'm pretty sure the movie was actually making that joke. Now, the... I guess that's more or less... I... I think... I, I read online that supposedly Rogue was also there in the future scenes, I didn't really see her. I don't know if it, but I did. You know, it was it was fun to see Colossus and Iceman use you know their powers in yeah in in this very you know important situation again and where it was really yeah and. Again, X Men Three didn't happen, so is more or less the first time we, we saw some of that. So, and the and the Sentinels also did. I mean, that that's one thing that you know X Men One and Two have to write out a lot of the more powerful, excuse me, mutants because there's only so many that they can fight. Here, because of all the Sentinels, it's just, you know, we just get to see the different characters, you know, flip out with their powers. And, yeah, I... I mean, as, as I said in the review, these are things that, you know, they don't really have actual characters. There's no actual personality to these people. Or, there's no arc, there's no story to them, you, you know. Obviously they do infuse the, you know, there is some personality there, of course, but, you know, it's it's the kind of thing where you basically could cut them and the movie as a whole wouldn't miss it, where, like, you know, if you cut a major scene between the, the trinity of Xavier Magneto and Mystique, that would be a problem. But... With that said, I had a lot of fun with just watching them use their powers. And the movie does so well at establishing. As I was saying to you, I mean, you see, you know, I, I don't even remember what the first thing we see Bishop be loaded up with, but yeah, you know, he gets all this power and then he fires it right back, you know. And yeah, and the, the things they do to take care of the, the Sentinels, you know, the the portals and shooting through portals and people jumping through portals, escaping through portals, you know, the... the yes, Valve is paying me by each mention of the word portal. Yeah, all of this stuff, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was really well choreographed. It was, yeah, it was never boring, the, the action. Now, I saw that might more or less cover it. I really liked the 
the confrontation on the plane with, you know, the two, yeah, Xavier and Magneto challenging the other as who betrayed or abandoned the other. And, yeah, that was really compelling. And, and it's like, you know, part of it is this big thing of, you know, Magneto starting to really damage the plane and such. And that is only, that you might say it's, it's only part of it and it's organic. It's not, you know, if, if you just described a scene where someone is, you know, starting to crush a plane and people are on it, that in itself doesn't, doesn't cut that deep. You know, that's just, you know, that's a roll of memory scene or something. But when it's that, the, the reason that's happening is that one of the people on board that plane is so angry, you know, and why he's angry, then it becomes so interesting. And, yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Every, yeah, every, every little thing with that. I love the humor that, come, that comes from the not quite, you know, the Charles... I, mean, I, I like Charles' arc with, and he starts with no hope, ends up with hope. I really like the, you know, before he gets all wise and, and such, the humor that comes from it. Like, I love how he tells Wolverine off, and I love that they brought up the cameo. I really hope that they would, and I'm really glad they did. And the, the thing of... You know, when, when he's trying to explain, well, Logan, Logan's younger self just came back. Yeah, something like that. And he's trying to explain, I'm Charles. You've been with us for several days. You're on acid. This is a really bad trip. That was really great. Now, the... Mm, I suppose... That more or less covers it. I I really like the the whole thing with Xavier. As I mentioned in the review, first class left a lot of you know messed up a lot of things that this one then cleans up. I love what they did with Xavier's legs that he can walk now, but it cost him the use of the telepathy. And then you have this whole thing of you gave up telepathy, you gave up your mutant ability and your ability to help others just to walk. And the and and it's one thing to have to go back. I mean he's he's shielded himself off from the world. It's one thing to go back out into the world. It's another to give up your legs as part of rejoining the world. You know, that is really, and, and that makes it all the more compelling when he does it, and we understand why he does it. Now, and I actually, I mean, yeah, the, the drama... Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to start listing all of the drama in this really worked. It was really gripping and really, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we saw Havoc. Hmm, excuse me. Pretty sure his name is Havoc, that we saw him again. I was a little surprised that he made it into the military. I would have thought that he'd just be in jail again, although were they that desperate in, in Vietnam for the, that they him from the, from jail. I don't know, but yeah, and and again, it's one of those things where he only he's on screen for like thirty seconds, but what he does in that time really works for his character. I hope they give him a bigger role in the next one. I I really do quite like the the actor and the whole portrayal. Now the. 
let's see, the, the, I suppose that more or less covers it. Yes, I believe so. So, bye. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.